Hi, this is Dan here. I hope you're doing well today. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to find the key of any piece of music. And I've got nine examples, and this should at least get you started. So I'm going to start off with the Joker, which goes like this. So what you would do is you would put the track on, and just after the first two notes, you'd pause it find that note, it's an F. Then you just figure out the other notes, and it's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle, this. You're trying to figure out what scale it fits to. That's basically what it means to, you know, a key. That's what it means, what scale are you using. And in this, when you... We're actually running up an F major scale, so we know it's in the key of F. Now, you need to know an F major scale. And the good thing about bass is that once you know a pattern, I've got videos on this, but I'll put the pattern up here. You can move the pattern around. So I would advise you to know the pattern inside out, back to front, ascending and descending, but also learn the sound of it. Because if you know the sound of it, you'll hear the major scale, even without your bass. When, when you put this on and you, you press play, you'll hear a major scale happening. Another good thing, to have the key under your fingers is that you can sort of fill and improvise. I probably wouldn't do this on a gig. I would stick to, you know, the bass line, but. That's just an F major pentatonic scale. It sounds really good for fills. And that's another tip. We're in the key of F major, so just to, 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 to convince yourself that, that you're right, just quickly reel off an F major pentatonic scale whilst the tune is running, and if it sounds right and good, which it will do, then you know that you're in that key. For example, if you played an F minor pentatonic over that, because you might think it's, it's minor, it would sound wrong, it would sound terrible. That's what I often do, I'll do trial and error, um, you know, stuff like this, I can hear it very quickly now. I can hear it almost instantly. But for you, you might want to do that little trick of just quickly playing the major pentatonic over it and see if it fits. Next one we'll do is a lovely day. And just getting to that point right there. Doing that thing again. Um, it's not always the case that the first note is the root note or that the home of the key or the scale. But in the Joker, it was, and in this one, it is as well. It's an E. So quickly over an E, I'm just going to... If you knew your pattern really well, and remember I said going up and going down, that just is the major scale going down. So that's, it's all jigsaw puzzles and clues. And once your ear gets used to this and you get better, you'll get much, much quicker at doing this. Now that note there, it plays a C. And this is a good example of a song that just doesn't always stick to exactly, you know, the notes of one scale and one key. That would be really boring if that happened. And, and Lovely Day certainly doesn't do that plays a little C outside of that. And don't forget that um, you're playing individual notes um, over the or underneath chords. We won't really get into that too much, but something very interesting happens in this in the bridge where it goes. This point here, it goes to the bridge. That's what it does. It goes from a major key to a minor key. So that's like parallel major to parallel minor. That's the technical sort of way. And that's a really interesting thing. You hear that in, in a few songs. It's, it's not very, very common, but certainly if you learnt that first bass line and then this bit, you're confronted with this bit, you'll think, well, what's happening there? I don't understand. But it's quite a common thing. And once you find that in one song, you'll hear it in another th song and you'll go, okay, I, I recognize that now. Um, <laughs> And the same trick applies, and I want you to do this as a little bit of practice, is put Lovely Day on in the background. And at the beginning, doing that bit, just... 
just play something using E major pentatonic and it'll sound really nice and melodic and you, you can go, okay, I'm in that key. And then when it goes to that other bit, minor pentatonic will work because we've shifted to that key so just try that over the original play a major pentatonic over the first bit and it will sound good play minor over the second bit us bass players if we're on a gig we're not really going to play a solo over that but i've seen people um you know stumble a little bit on that tune live when someone just says you do a solo and when it gets to that bit something changes and the ear maybe quite not doesn't quite latch onto that so you know this is all ear training isn't it and it's all also experience to to find songs that do certain things you know joke is pretty easy sticks to one thing this is pretty easy but it does something that's not you know something you'll see in or hear in every single song This is Wilton Felder's amazing bass line, I Want You Back. And it does do the same thing of, of the first note being the key we're in. So, so that's a good little tip, you know. It's an A flat. So just quickly reel off what you think it is. I'm hearing happy sort of thing, so I'm major scale. And, and actually the bass, when it goes into the... It really does just descend the notes of a major scale, which brings me back to that point of just absolutely make sure that you know the major scale. If you don't, you're a little bit unsure, then this is all going to be a bit more difficult for you. Know that and it's much, much easier. You start to get the, the pattern under your fingers and the sound of it into your head. I'm playing it a slightly weird way because there's a lot of chromatic notes that are happening in between those actual notes. I think I'll do a tutorial on this because it's a really good one. See that? It's chromatic, just meaning fret by fret. Apart from that, I'll just quickly show you this because this is quite important. That's the first six notes of the scale. If I rearrange the notes so that they're on two strings now, I'll just do the six notes. So that's frets four six and eight of both the E and the A strings. If you number those, one, two, three, four, five, six. Musicians do that, you know, that you get chord progressions like that is six to three, four to one. And we got to, you probably heard of this, two, five, one. Right? This is something I use a lot when I learn tunes and when I play tunes. If you know the key, you can also memorize songs really easily because I know the patterns. That's what I'm showing you here. So let me do that again. Another reason that's really important, I once did a gig and very um, close to the to the start of the gig, the musical director said, right, we're going to do, well, first of all, they said, we're going to do this tune. I happened to know it, which was good. And, and we're going to do it in a different key. Now, if you know patterns, it's really easy to do on bass. I can't remember what the key is, but let's just say they said down a tone. So down two frets. Or whatever it is. I'm just doing literally the same pattern there, just in a different place. That's why you must know patterns, because it will make your life a lot easier. The first three examples were in a major key, and we also have natural minor keys. So every major key has a related minor. It's just a minor scale that has the same notes. Very easy to find, because what was the key we were just in? We were just in A flat. Either go to the sixth note or go down one, two, three frets, or even do that thing I told you. If you know that pattern, you go up six notes this way, you'll get to the same note, which is an F. And so F minor 
is related to A flat major. They both have exactly the same notes in them, okay? And lots of songs are written in that key. So things like Lovely Day and Joker, they sound happy and you know to maybe go in that direction towards the major key. But here is Feel Good Ink and it goes. And again, it just fits completely under that, relative, uh, under that natural minor scale pattern. So I, I'd know the root note is E flat. Uh, I'll, I'll, when you're working out tunes, just you might have to piece it together. You might even, depending on where you are with this, you might even just have to press pause after the first note, and stop. And, and you know, you won't see me doing this, but often I haven't got a perfect pitch. So people who have will just go, that's an E flat. I might have to go, well, there it is, this is that note. Okay, fine. There are 12 notes in music and you might just have to literally just f keep going up and down till you hit the one that it is. That's fine. If you feel frustrated doing that, I mean, I still do this to this day. Sometimes I can get pretty close. To be honest, most of the time I can get pretty close, but I'll often be out. But just quickly find it and then... If you reel that scale off the natural minor over this song and it fits, you know that's the key you're in. So in E flat natural minor... I'm deliberately not teaching the exact riff because you can take the knowledge that it's in this key, listen to the original and try this for yourself. Try figuring out bass lines for yourself. It's one of the number one skills that you can learn as a bass player. Once you get more confident in this, once you can link the bass line to a key and you can improvise around it and make up your own riffs, you really will go far by doing that. And that will only happen by you putting in the work. That's not what happens, but I just was... That's a little E flat minor pentatonic there. Often when you hear live musicians play, they will play the original and put some fills in. You, you've probably heard that before and cool little solos can be made from the knowledge that we're in this particular key. It's another reason why this is important. Another minor based riff that I really like is a Dizzy Rascal one called Dance With Me. And it goes. And again, start, stop there. I heard that it was a D flat, that's fourth fret A string. It's just running up the first three notes of a natural minor scale. The reason it's good to know the key is, as I said, to improvise add fills, but also if I know that this is a D flat minor and I'm playing a gig, I can, there's D flat, I'm, I'm conditioned to completely know this pattern, so the notes are under there. It's not a mystery anymore. Even if I don't know the, the riff very, very well, I haven't practiced it lots, I can, I can fall back on patterns, which really helps. Now, if I continue. I'll stop there because this is another example of a song that doesn't stick to exactly the same thing. That note there, the B flat. It doesn't belong to D flat natural minor, which is this. It's a bit of a funny note. It's a B flat and it spells out sort of Dorian tonality. And this is the point in the lesson where we just go a little bit further than just simply there's a major and there's a natural minor. I'm pretty confident to say that both of those scales represent a very big body of music, so definitely learn them, and definitely start off at that point. But, and we'll get into this in the remainder of the lesson, it's just a, a big part of the picture, but not everything. So we have something called the Dorian mode. So in this case than that. It's the same as a natural minor, but just with a major sixth instead of a minor sixth. I'll play it this way. So it kind of briefly goes into this Dorian thing. And when it goes back to that A natural, it sort of reverts back to a natural minor. And this is what I, I certainly do this. When I'm working out a bass line like this, 
I always love to know the reasons behind these things. So I do a lot of writing myself. I do way more recording. So when I can hear these things, when you're making up bass lines for an artist, you're not you're not the composer, but you do have to compose a bass line. So it helps to know what works over certain situations. So even from that Dizzy Rascal tune, I will be thinking, oh. I'd be thinking, okay, well, you can morph between a D-flat natural minor and a D-flat Dorian. That works. And I'm very much that sort of way round. I mean, you can, of course, just make stuff up and not have a clue what, what, why it works. And most artists probably do that. And that's that's a brilliant way of doing it. I, I like the other way around. Oh, I, do, I do both, to be honest. But I like the other way around of, of finding out that, that that works, you know, natural minus to Dorian, and then exploring that. And now I can make up lots of riffs based around that idea. The Chain by Fleetwood Mac does a very similar thing of going up three notes of a minor scale. If you play A major, it's wrong. It just doesn't sound right to go A, B, C sharp, but A, B, C. Most of the riffs I've picked for today, in fact, I think every single one of them, it has been the case that the first starting note has been the name of the key. Whether it's been major or minor, we've had to decide that. So that's clearly a good way to start out is just by asking yourself, is that the beginning? And then, you know, just play a little bit of the A natural minor scale. Does it fit? In this case, yes, it does. So we know we're in the key of A minor. You don't have to say I'm in the key of A natural minor. You just say I'm in the key of A minor. And that more often than not means natural minor. It doesn't always because you could be in a Dorian key, which we'll move on to. Let's do good times. This is another one. It starts off going up the notes of a minor scale, E, F sharp, G. But if we continue, you need to know absolutely 100% major and natural minor to start with. And if we play E natural minor, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C. It's not a C, it's a C sharp. And that's a Dorian mode. It's a very common mode. We hear it a lot in music. If you're interested in funk, anything like that, then you need to know that scale. Um, it happens a lot. And this just walks up that scale. And it goes to A. So it's, uh, if I play the chords up here. It's a 2-5 chord progression. That's another thing you need to know is the chord progressions that underlie a key. And that's all it does. That's useful if you want to do fills. That's just... Over the five chord, it's an A mixolydian. That's what I'm playing here. Any one of those notes will work over that five chord. Again, I probably would just play the normal bass line. But if you're on a gig, someone might call the bass player to do a solo. So now you know you're in E Dorian. Obviously know the scale in different places. The bass is just all patterns, so it's more or less the same thing I was doing in different places. How many notes is an E Dorian scale? Just seven different ones, and that's all you have to know, really. I mentioned Mixolydian, I played that um, over that five chord. Another benefit of absolutely knowing your major scale and natural minor scale really well is that the Dorian mode is exactly the same as the natural minor, except one note's different, that sixth note going up a fret. And so if you know the natural minor scale really well, you can very easily learn the Dorian mode. It's simple. Same happens with this Mixolydian. If you know a major scale, you can very easily play a Mixolydian because 
It's just the same, except this time it's the seventh note down a fret. Uh, flat seven instead of a major seven. So here's an A major scale. Should I do this? No, I'm going to do this in E. Here's an E major scale, seventh fret, A string. Just from a teaching point of view, if you're told, and you know a major scale 100%, this is what I'm assuming, and you're just told to flatten the seventh note. That means make it go down that way one fret. So you play all the other notes the same. You get that. So someone tells you, I tell you, a mixed Lydian is the same as a major, just flatten the seventh. And now you're starting to get the lingo. It's a bit theory, but you get the lingo. And I just want to focus on this. Jacko used to do loads and loads of playing around this sort of a lick. And look, just those notes. Just a major pentatonic scale. I'll show you the, the actual notes in this case so you can follow along. I'm going fret, um, sort of descending actually. So I'm going fret 9, 6 on G and D. And then 9, 7 on the A. Let's not worry about the note names because you can move this around. You should know the intervals. So octave, major 6th, 5th, major 3rd, major 2nd root. And then I'm going actually frets, uh, what's that, seven and nine on the E string. And he used to do loads of stuff around this. There is a major framework based around, but with a flat seven. So we do that thing of filling in the gaps. And we find that Jacko is using these notes from this Mixolydian scale. And that fits. This happens a lot in soul music, in blues. It happens a Old school R&B, soul. That those styles of music, this happens all the time. So this is a good one to learn because when you're learning bass lines, it might be the case that you just know your major scale really, really well. But every now and again, you're coming up against a major scale, but with a flat seventh. Doesn't make sense. Well, it does if you understand this, this mode, this Mixolydian mode. So that's just root to octave to this flat seven. I'm either playing it second finger or barring it. That's just a major third, chromatically up to the fifth. And there's that. Just those notes of the major pentatonic scale. Again, it's it's patterns and it's um, it's sounds. Once you're fairly confident with what we're doing here in one pattern, like move it around. You know, force yourself to play the same things, but up the octave across one string, you know, when you really understand the bass fretboard in that way, you can start to express yourself way more. By moving Dorian, mix lid in, I'm going a bit um, more complicated than very, very simple major or natural minor. I can't spend the whole video just on that because I want to show you the other things. I'll put a link below to a list of a load of tunes, most of which are probably major and minor, but some will have some of the other good stuff in, for you to practice. And what you want to do is you just want to to listen to it with your bass and just pause. And there might be a little section in the song that you want to learn. It may not be the whole song, just one little section. Take that and just even if you have to go round and round, I still do this, I have to go round and round and round to, to figure out a little passage, you might have to do that. So it's just all part of the discipline of, of training your ear and of, of relying on yourself a lot more than YouTube or me or, or your teacher or whatever. You want to rely on yourself and you will learn so much by doing this. So I'm going to finish off with a, a dream theatre riff. It's off images and words. It's called Take the Time. And as is, you know, progressive rock music's sort of ethos, 
it just shifts a lot in terms of time signatures and especially in terms of harmonies and melodies. So this song just this is a bit of a bit of a round a bit in the middle where it goes. It's just a brilliant riff. And so we're starting on a G sharp, that's the fourth fret of the E string. And exactly like every single riff in this lesson, that is the key we're in. That's the name of the key we're in. So G sharp, but G sharp what? Okay, that note there. It's an A, the fifth fret right next door to the G sharp. And immediately that is weird. Because if I play G sharp major, or A flat major, same thing. The second note is two frets away, as is the case with the minor on that root. But this does what sounds like Jaws, called a minor second or a flat second. Otherwise, otherwise it's the same as a natural minor, but here is another mode. It's a Phrygian mode, which is exactly the same as the natural minor scale with a flat second instead of a normal major second. You hear it a lot in rock and darker styles of music. It's sometimes called the Spanish scale for obvious reasons. But then you find this riff from Take the Time is Phrygian. It does something cool, it goes. Then it goes to upper fourth, to the fourth fret of the A string. And it goes down a fifth to the second fret. So it's essentially the same riff in the same Phrygian tonality moving around. And your ear will rapidly sort of latch onto that. Now that doesn't come, each of those three riffs, it's not from one key, it's moving key every time. And so if you listen to something like progressive rock, you'll find that more complicated things like that happen. That's why some people hate that music and I love it. And, you know, different people have different tastes, ranging from liking quite simple music to, you know, jazz fusion and you know, Chick Corea, Herbie Hancock, things that are a little bit harder on, more difficult for the ear. And wherever you are, it doesn't matter, you know, listen to what you like. But what you will find is that every bass line that you're ever going to be playing comes from a key, whether it's very, very simple, like something like the Joker, or a little bit more complex and involved, like Take the Time. What I would recommend that you do is you just write down a list of songs where you can look at the ones I've written down. I've got 90. Tackle some of those, or just go through five of your favorite ones. Make sure they're simple, because if you if you start off trying to work out something very, very difficult, you're going to really set yourself up for failure. You'll give up, you'll find it too difficult, you'll get frustrated. So make sure it's easy. If it sounds happy, it's probably major. If it sounds a bit darker, it's probably natural minor. Start off at those points. Then you've got your Mixolydian, you've got your Dorian. Those are two very, very common ones. Phrygian, not so much. But these, those are all modes from the major scale. So you would probably want to tackle a few of those and, and, and make sure that your ear, you can understand where these are coming from in music. Just keep learning, keep figuring out bass lines, and all of this will fall into place in no time at all. I hope that made sense to you and you got something from that video. And if you did, please like and share the video and do subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions as ever, let me know. See you next time.